as we come towards the last part of uh, of this particular uh, unit we are now going to cover a few more things like how do we analyze the income statements uh, we are going to explain a term called common size uh, income statements so we're going to look at what do we mean by common size income statements and then comprehensive income statements or a term called other comprehensive income right that's not too relevant from our uh, perspective under Indian companies but nevertheless we should understand what the term means so we're going to try and talk about that term as we go along right now the first thing we need to understand is that when we look at multiple companies income statements right so when we are comparing income statements unless we use some sort of ratios we can't really compare income statements between two companies. I mean, there's a company that makes revenue of 200 crore and there's a company that makes revenue of 20,000 crore. Cost here is 150, cost here is 13,000 crore. Unless we really dig deeper into the numbers, we can't compare these two companies because their size and scale are completely different. So we have to get them to a common metric where we can try and compare as to how the numbers look like for these two companies assuming of course they are in similar industries or even if they are not in similar industries to get knowledge of how do individual line items in the income statement look like we are going to try and look at what is called as common size income statements right now what do we mean by common size statements a common size statement is an income statement where each account each line item of the PL is expressed as a percentage of the value of sales. Typically you use net sales for this. This type of financial statement can allow you, can be used to allow easy analysis between companies or between time periods for the same company, right? So both from the perspective of peer comparison, when we are looking at various companies around us and trying to look at comparison with them, or from the perspective of uh, historical comparison we can use common size statements because then this allows us to kind of build each line item in the PL as a percentage of sales right how do you find anything as a percentage of sales you take the respective line item and you divide it by the sales number that's going to be your common size statement right Let's take an example. Let's say there are three companies which are there and uh, you see the sales for these three companies. You see the numbers for these three companies. They're all doing sales. The first two are doing sales of one crore each. The last one is doing sales of somewhere to the tune of 20 lakhs essentially, right? Now, it's difficult to compare them directly. Cost of sales for one is lesser, for one is more. So obviously gross profit is higher in the first case. Then there are some selling expenses, but this company also spends a little bit on research and advertising. The first company doesn't do any, uh, the, the second company doesn't do anything there. The third company spends a lot uh, as compared to their sales on on research and advertising and everything so how do you really go about looking at these numbers so what do you do when you have to look at common size statements the basic way of looking at common size statements is you look at this number cost of sales so you look at the th the 30 lakh number and you divide it by the one crore number which is the sales so everything has to be divided by the sales number right just divide everything by the sales number so that's going to give you a percentage value of each one of these as compared to sales so we divide everything by sales when you divide everything by sales you get these numbers sales are 100 percent obviously because sales divided by sales is going to be one cost of sales now when you compare these companies you get more relevant data in the first case your gross profit margin is 70 percent in the second case it's 25 percent in the third case it's 10 percent it's 70 percent right so even though the third company is much smaller in size you find that their profitability is similar their uh, their expenses that are given in terms of these three line items are 10 percent 20 percent 20 percent so operating profit at the end of this entire thing is 20 percent and 20 percent for both the companies the second company seems to be making 15 percent operating profit but that's because they're not investing anything in research and they're not doing any kind of advertising at all 
right so basically they are less profitable on the gross profit level itself as compared to the first and third company now we can compare these two companies and say this one is more profitable this one is more profitable this is a red flag here uh, the companies here that's research and development is not there so that's a red flag but there's a positive that they don't really use any advertising but are still able to sell the same amount so that's a positive for them in terms of profitability you would choose company a and company c but not choose company b because that's lesser selling general and admin expenses are approximately the same percentage of sales for all these three companies right so that's that's a comparative analysis of these three companies so the moment you kind of come convert it to common size statements it is easier for us to kind of comprehend and analyze uh, analyze these uh, statements across uh, companies right let's take a simple example and understand this better let us look at the following company companies prepare the common size statement for them so there are two companies a and b and we actually have the entire detailed uh, statement available with us remember all we have to do is divide all these by sales to get the common size statement we can do that right so to divide everything by sales to understand this better let's go to an excel file so those are the numbers that we see if we have to build common size statements so what we are going to do is we're going to write about common size statements here and let's just write a and b here itself right so that's what we're going to do and what do we do we have to take sales and we have to divide by sales and we have to freeze the sales number correct i can convert it to percentages so that's 100 percent all i need to do is drag this down you've already frozen this as you would learn in excel how do you freeze cell so you can select this sales number and press f4 and then in each of the formula you will see everything gets divided by the sales number correct I can remove the zeros because that's not really needed for our perspective. Similarly, I will go for company B, take the sales number and divide by the sales number. The denominator is what is frozen. I will put this, that as 100%, select it downwards, delete the zeros, and now let's compare and make our analysis based on the comparison. So raw material cost higher for company B marketing cost higher for b employee cost is also higher for b correct so obviously operating profit is higher for a then we find that depreciation is about approximately three percent if we add a few decimal points we might get more clear ideas so both depreciation and interest are higher for B right so B probably has more debt as well than a on on a comparative basis when you compare it to their sales tax is higher for a the tax rate that is happening on an overall sales basis becomes higher for a that's because obviously tax is calculated on profits if your profits are higher the tax number will be here but in in general the tax number is being calculated here as 30 percent of your pre-tax profits so from that perspective it is similar your net profit is higher for a and so a company a is more profitable when you compare it to company b when you look at common size statements you can now say that raw material cost is higher for company b you can say that that's higher by about 1.2 percent a marketing cost is higher by 1.2 percent employee cost is higher by 1.2 percent essentially right so you could say that these costs are higher and the company is ending up spending more on these areas and that is why the common size statement is useful when we are comparing two companies with different sizes we can say that on our analysis company a looks more profitable right all you need to do is take each line item and divided by the sales number to get a common size statement in percentage terms you will probably have to practice a little bit more with this with multiple companies and multiple exercises but that's the broad crux of how do you go about looking at a common size statement right 
Next, we move to a concept called other comprehensive income. Now, that's a slightly tricky concept. Revenues, expenses, gains, and losses that appear in other comprehensive income. These are those gains that have not been, they have not been realized, right? Let's say a company buys a bond or invests in a stock at the price of 100. Now, they've not sold the stock. The stock's value has gone to 120. This is unrealized gain that the company has. Something that has been realized, right, when the underlying transaction is completed, such as when an investment is sold. Thus, if your company has invested in bonds and the value of those bonds has changed essentially, right, you recognize the difference as gain or loss in other comprehensive income. Once you sell, then you can realize the gain or uh, you can then have realized the gain or loss associated with the bonds and shift it from other comprehensive income to a line item higher in the income statement. So usually the way it works is you have an income statement and under global practices, just below this, you will give what is called as other comprehensive income, right? Now, the treatment of other comprehensive income differs in Indian GAAP and IFRS and all these uh, all these data points. But typically, any unrealized gains or losses that are occurring in the, in the company's normal course of work, they are going to come under other comprehensive income. These are gains that have not been materialized, right? Now, there are broadly four kinds of items that can get classified in other, current, other uh, comprehensive income unrealized holding gains or losses on investments that are classified as investments held for sale available for sale so you are trading in these investments right so you're trading in these investments and if there are unrealized holding gains or losses they come under a part there foreign currency translation gains or losses so if you are generating hundred dollars of revenue and that's 6500 or 6700 depending on what kind of translation differences are coming in there could be a gain or loss on account of foreign currency translation let's say you buy a bond in the us or you take money from the us these translation gains or losses are essentially going to be classified here as well pension plan gains or losses and pension prior service costs or credits now this comes under pension accounting it is beyond the scope of our discussion at this point of time pension is a fairly complicated way of accounting uh, what is due for employees in the future we're not worried about that accounting at this point of time all that we need to remember is that if we read other comprehensive income somewhere in the financial statements that is coming because of some unrealized gains Note that under Indian GAAP, usually there is no separate representation of OCI. You have to give your net profit statement and then under that, you put in the other comprehensive income if there's anything. Most companies actually report it within the, within the net profit itself. So we don't really see this term very significantly in the context of Indian companies. It is important, however, to know this purely because you will probably come across this uh, this across uh, some of the international companies if you're trying to trace them right that's the context of other comprehensive income so not a very very important uh, or a very extremely relevant topic from our perspective what is very relevant is the common size statements understanding just to quickly reiterate everything explained as a percentage of sales is what do we mean by common size statements when we are building a common size statement for any kind of company income statement right you could also have common size statements in terms of balance sheets and cash flows but we are worried about income statement at this point of time that's basically a common size statement that brings us to an end to this particular section as well as we end this section a couple of quick questions what do we mean by a common size statement and more importantly what is the use of a common size statement? Thank you.